In the last video, we found the angle theta, which maximizes this angle out here. That angle theta gives us the direction that the speedboat must move in, the direction of vector vs, such that the speedboat gets as close as possible to the yacht. We found that angle theta by using a fairly simple geometrical argument. In this video, we will do that problem again. We will find theta, but this time by using calculus. In the last video we saw that the velocity of the yacht relative to the speedboat is given by this here. So here is Vys. Now, to find the value of theta that maximizes this angle here, we have to consider the components of vector Vys. Well, the horizontal component is 11.28 minus 10 cos theta. We know that that's positive. Okay, we explained that in the previous video. Um, what about the vertical component? Well, the vertical component is negative. S theta is some acute angle, so sine of theta is positive, and minus 4.1 minus 10 sine theta is certainly going to be negative. So what we will do is consider the magnitude of the vertical component. So we just change the sine of this here, 4.1 plus 10 sine theta. Just makes it a little bit easier to work with when we consider magnitudes. Okay, so we want to maximize angle A. Well, well, yeah, we call it A, first of all. It's the same as this angle up here, of course. Okay, these angles are the same. They're corresponding angles. Now, rather than looking at angle A directly, we will look at the tan of angle A. So, angle A is going to be some acute angle in this problem. And the tan of A is going to be positive. So the thing on top is positive and the thing underneath is positive. Now since A is an acute angle, the bigger that angle A is, the bigger the tan of A is. Because you see tan of A is opposite over adjacent. It's this side divided by this side. As A gets bigger, the tan of A gets bigger. Okay, that's for angles A ranging from 0 to 90 degrees. And they're the range of values that we will only be considering because A is certainly not outside that range. So rather than writing down inverse tan and trying to get the derivative of the inverse tan function, which is uh, far too complicated, we will look at maximizing tan of A. So let's differentiate tan of A with respect to theta. And we have to set this derivative equal to zero to find a value of theta that maximizes or minimizes tan of A. So we have a quotient of functions here the usual notation is that the numerator is called u and the denominator is called v. So we have uh, v times the derivative of the top. Now the derivative of 4.1 is 0. The derivative of sine theta is cos theta. So we get 10 cos theta for the, the u d theta. Then we have minus sine and then we have u times dv d theta. So we have 4.1 plus 10 sine theta times the derivative of what's underneath. The derivative of 11.28 is 0. Differentiating cos, we get minus sine. So this will become plus 10 sine theta. So that's the derivative of what's... That's um, v du dt minus u dv dt. This is all divided by v squared. So that's the denominator squared. We don't need to worry about that because we're setting this equal to 0 and solving. Now the only way a fraction can be equal to 0 is if what's on top is 0. So we can forget about the denominator. Now, if we multiply out everything on top, this is what we get. Notice that we have a cos squared theta and a sine squared theta. And we can factorize minus 100 out. So we have minus 100 times cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. Now, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1, no matter what theta is. Okay, this is a famous identity. So we just have minus 100 times 1, which is minus 100. And that can be brought over to the right-hand side. Um, so we will end up with 11... Uh, well, actually, this should be 112.8 here from 10 times 11.28. We end up with, with 112.8 cos theta minus 41 sine theta equals 100. So now we have to solve this equation for theta. So you can see already that the calculus method is quite complicated. Um, now, how do we solve this? Well, one way to do it is to use an identity. Here is the identity that I will use. 
Now the thing inside the brackets should be familiar. Well, in tables it's usually written cos A cos B minus sine A sine B, but you can see B has been replaced with theta, because that's what we, we, we need theta in this. And on the right hand side we have cos A plus B, where B has been replaced by theta, okay? So that's a well-known identity. Now I've multiplied both sides by K. Now you need to do that because uh, if you just uh, try to compare without that, you'll end up writing down that cos A equals 112.8. Well, the cos function has a maximum value of plus 1. There is no angle A whose cos is 112.8. So we always need to have this constant stuck in front, this constant K, when we're using this identity, or an identity like it, for compound angles. Okay, we have a compound angle here, we're summing them, uh, summing two angles. So all we have to do now is compare, compare the left-hand side. So K cos A must equal... 112.8, see when we make that comparison. Actually, it's a mistake to call this angle A, because then it looks like this angle A, and it isn't. So, I better call that something else, B. Of course, we don't need B, we need theta. But we have to get theta indirectly by first of all getting b and probably k as well. So k cos b is 112.8 and you can see that k times sine b is equal to 41. Now this may look very complicated but if we divide k sine b by k cos b, the k's cancel. We get sine b over cos b which is tan b. Now, once b has been found, we can plug it into one of these two equations to find out what k is, and I've just written down k to two decimal places. Now we can go and get theta, so what I can do is I can compare the right-hand side to 100. So k cos b plus theta equals 100, or cos b plus theta is 100 divided by k, 100 divided by 120.02. I've written this down to three decimal places. Uh, so now we can get b plus theta, and from that we can get theta because we have b. Plug in for b here. So we have to get the inverse cos of this. And then we have to subtract b. Subtract 19.9749. Now this is roughly what we got last time. To one decimal place this is 13.6. There's been quite a bit of rounding going on. The last time using the geometrical method we got 13.56, which is actually more accurate. For the next question we have to get the closest distance that the speedboat gets to the yacht. So in the last video um, we got the maximum value of this angle, 76.44. Now you can also get that here by plugging 13.6 in for theta and solving for angle A. So this angle A turns out to be um, 76.44. So as I explained in the previous video, um, we are looking at the velocity of the yacht as seen by S, by the speedboat. So the axes are fixed at the speedboat. Of course they're moving axes because the speedboat is moving. But initially at t equals zero, the yacht is up here at this position and in subsequent times the yacht is going to move in this direction. We know this angle now is 76.44. This is the angle that minimizes the distance of the speedboat to the path of the yacht. So this is the closest distance that the speedboat gets to the yacht, so we have to find this distance here. To do that we only need to get this angle here, because we have one side of the right angle triangle, it's 40. So this angle is opposite this angle, so this angle in here is 76.44, we're in a right angle triangle, so now we can find this third angle. We just uh, take 76.44 from 90. So that's 13.56, next we take 13.56 from 60 degrees. We get 46.44 degrees, and the last step is straightforward. We just want a side adjacent to 46.44 degrees in this right angle triangle. The hypotenuse is 40. So uh, this distance here is going to be the hypotenuse which is 40 times the cos 
of 46.44 degrees. So we get 27.56 kilometers. That's the answer to that question. Finally, we want to find out how long it takes for the closest approach to occur. So from S's perspective, the yacht is moving in this direction with velocity Vys. So here's the velocity vector. And uh, we want to see how long it takes the yacht to go from here to here, as seen by S. So for one thing, we need to find this distance. So let's do that first of all. Well, we can use Pythagoras to do that, because this is the third side of a right angle triangle. The hypotenuse is 40. The other short side we just found is 27.56. So this short side here is the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus the other short side squared. Now if we round this to the nearest integer, or even one decimal place, we get 29. So how do we find the time taken for the yacht to go from here to here? Well, we need the magnitude of the vector Vys. Well, to do that, we can refer to our diagram connecting the three vectors Vys, Vs, and Vy. Vs has magnitude 10, Vy has magnitude 12, and now we have the angle between Vs and Vy. It's 20 plus theta, where theta is roughly 13.6 degrees. So if we know two sides and the angle in between the two sides, we can find the length of the third side using the cosine rule. However, from the last video, we saw that when this angle here is maximized, this angle here is 90 degrees. So the other method of doing it is much quicker. Not only was it quicker and easier to find angle theta, but uh, it's also easier to find the length of vector Vys once we realize that vector Vys is part of a right angle triangle. We just have to use Pythagoras' theorem. So we just want to find this side of this right angle triangle. The hypotenuse is 12, the other short side is 10, so this side is the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus the other side squared. The two decimal places, that's 6.63 kilometers per hour. So that's the magnitude of the vector Vys. Okay, so the yacht travels at a distance of 29 kilometers at a speed of 6.63 kilometers per hour. Since we're dealing with constant speed, we can uh, use the formula constant speed is distance traveled divided by time taken. V equals D over T. We can rearrange that to get T equals D over V. So we have 29 kilometers divided by 6.63 kilometers per hour. Kilometers cancel out. We multiply above and below by H to get 4.4 hours.